Hey, Alexandra Smith. Uh, Alex, thank you so much for being with us on the Midday Briefing. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. So, the president made his pick to succeed Justice Anthony Kennedy this week. Tell us what you think about the pick. I could not be more excited. You know, we had a lot of great names on the president's list, and a list, by the way, that he provided to us before the elections were even over. So uh, everyone had a full window into his thinking on this. Uh, he worked with a lot of great groups to come up with this list. And, of course, you know, conservatives have been cultivating um, great members of the judiciary and the federal, federal judiciary for years. So we had a really deep bench to choose from. Um, but Judge Brett Kavanaugh is someone who exemplifies the two most important concepts for conservatives, which are originalism and textualism. We want judges who are going to interpret the Constitution according to its pub original public intent. And we also want judges who are going to follow the letter of the law, not just, you know, sort of how they interpret it or reading in other sort of interpretations into it. So, um, you know, he has a long story judicial career and, you know, we could not be more excited about this pick. Well, we know that, of course, there are going to be fights uh, on his nomination, and we're, we're already seeing the Democrats uh, line up against him, and we're expecting a very bruising fight. Uh, but overall, do you think he will actually sell, his uh, confirmation will sell through? And also, what do you think could be some of the sticking points that he might have to address going forward? I do think that his confirmation is going to uh, going to sail through at the end of the day. Um, you know, I think we're seeing a lot of posturing right now, a lot of politics, um, but, you know, it's really impossible to ignore his qualifications and his credentials. Someone even like Joe Manchin, um, senator from West Virginia, he's a, a senator that's up for re-election in the state that the president won by more than 15 points uh, last uh, in the last presidential cycle. Uh, he already signaled that um, you know, he's open to, to Judge Kavanaugh. He, he's impressed by what he sees so far. Uh, he was one of the senators that we pulled over um, to vote for Justice Gorsuch back in 2017. We were able to pull over three Democrats while maintaining the entire Republican caucus. You know, Chuck Schumer says that he has a way, he has a pathway to defeat this nomination, uh, or this confirmation, I should say. But I really just don't see it happening, particularly when you have 10 Democratic senators who are running in seats the president won. Um, and, you know, they, they have a lot to answer for with their constituents already, whether it's, you know, voting against tax cuts and jobs act. Some of them voted against Justice Gorsuch. I think that this with such a qualified man is a, a slam dunk for them to take back to their constituents and to say, hey, you know, what? I actually do work with the president sometimes. Well, we, we know, uh, and there has been much discussion about President Trump's, uh, who the top four uh, finalists were, and uh, there were there was uh, Kavanaugh and Hardiman and Amy Coney Barrett, of the of of the three or four uh, top candidates, and and of course of the there was a list of twenty five, which we know the Federal Federalist Society had uh, worked and cultivated with this White House to put together. Was there any other candidate on the list? And I, I know you. Very happy with Kavanaugh, and and he, he's he's uh, he's a very qualified uh, jurist uh, to to be selected. But was there any uh, candidate in particular that you were rooting for? We do know that uh, Senate Ma Majority Leader Mitch McConnell uh, was actually uh, rooting for Hardiman, and uh, many thought that Hardiman had the inside track uh, as he was the runner-up of. Uh, to Neil Gorsuch, and so many thought that he uh, would would be selected by the president. And one of the reasons we know that Mitch McConnell wanted him is because uh, Kavanaugh has a much more extensive paper trail, which he believes could uh, make for a bumpier ride uh, leading up to his confirmation. But was there any uh, candidate in particular that you or members of America Rising uh, looked at that you thought would would make a better candidate outside of the or stood out out of the the, the list of 25 that were on the list? Well, so this is a truly a place where, as conservatives, we did have an embarrassment of riches of sorts when it came to, um, you know, this list. There were so many qualified people. There, there were so many exciting people um, that, you know, when it got narrowed down to the top four, um, you know, I was excited about any one of those names, truly. Um, and, and what's good about these names is that, you know, They've already been put out there. We've seen people's reactions to them. On the conservative side, all 
you know, four were, were uh, sort of greeted very warmly. Um, you know, of course, as conservatives, we're going to have like our, you know, nitpicky fights over certain decisions or certain wording, and that's a great thing. And I think it really speaks to the intellectual heft we have on our side when it comes to the, the judiciary. Um, but, you know, the president, I think, from what I understand from um, some of his thinking and, and people close to him, you know, they look at people like Judge Amy Coney Barrett or like a Hardiman as, as absolutely potential people that could be up for the next time um, should the president get a third bite at this apple. So, um, you know, I think the fact that Judge Kavanaugh was chosen was, was great. He just has an exemplary career. Um, and I, I'm not worried about his, his chances of confirmation. And I think that it leaves, uh, you know, many other qualified people to, uh, you know, to step in should there be another vacancy. Well, when looking at this pick, of course, many have actually uh, discussed the, 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 what this means for the actual court, and particularly as it looks as we look at some of the big ticket items that could be on the, the court's agenda uh, if uh, Kavanaugh is actually confirmed. So issues like Roe v. Wade or affirmative action. How do you see uh, this court shaping out uh, with a Kavanaugh taking the place of a, a Kennedy? And what do you what do you think? that means in terms of uh, the issues and, and the, the, the cases that will come before the court and, and just the overall texture and ethos of the court with a Kavanaugh? So I think it's important to note that in these confirmation hearings, we're unlikely to hear, you know, how Judge Kavanaugh would rule on any particular issue, only because, you know, it kind of goes back to the standard that Justice Ginsburg had set during her confirmation hearings, which is that, you know, she sort of articulated that she didn't think it was appropriate for a justice, um, you know, a potential justice to comment on a hypothetical uh, set of facts. And, and, you know, there's good reason for it. And it's beyond just sort of the political posturing, um, you know, and how uh, polarizing these fights have gone. It's, it's truly because by the time a case reaches the Supreme Court, the, the facts and the, and the legal procedures that you know, preceded it are of such particularity um, that you know, these, the issues that, that, that are decided are often of such a granular sort of nuanced nature that it would be, I think, uh, it, it would be unwise to make such a, a bold or sweeping um, you know, comment about any of these particular issues. I will say, you know, look, you know, there's a there's a lot that's spoken about with stare decisis and and you know um, respect for precedent, uh, and you know I think that there's been a lot of scaremongering, as there was, by the way, when uh, a Judge uh, Judge Kennedy was being considered for the court. Uh, you know, we've seen liberals who have, have gotten up in arms and, and said, you know, like and and painted a very bleak, you know, post apocalyptic world if any one of these you know uh, candidates gets gets on the bench and that just hasn't happened i, I think where we would see um judge kavanaugh um really make his mark is when it comes into reigning the administrative state in um so if you just look at his record um you know of course the administrative state is something that's born out of the executive branch these are all those agencies that you see when you walk up and down the streets of washington those big buildings you don't really know what anyone does but they're there um, you know those those uh, the people in those buildings they're they're making they're making rules um, that sometimes look like laws and of course you know under our constitution uh, Congress is empowered to pass laws and not unaccountable agencies um, and so what Judge Kavanaugh has shown is he's he's really shown a hostility you know towards uh, towards agencies that you know. Uh, try to step into that Article One role when really, you know, they should be in a more limited Article Two, uh, you know, role that's that's subject to to, um, to the authority and oversight of Congress. Which actually, I think, uh, flows very well into the ide- ideology of the Republican Party in that it would call for a, a much more limited uh, role of government, which uh, I think has been a hallmark and a, a pillar of the Republican Party. So I think that's something that uh, most conservatives would actually cheer for, yes? I, I think so. But I think that it, you know, it speaks to the guiding principles that we consider as conservatives when we talk about the judiciary. Um, and I think that this is where... 
we really do have an advantage in these fights because as conservatives, we're, you know, contrary to sort of the, the popular belief out there and, and the quick way that we, uh, quick and careless way we sometimes talk about politics in our 24-7, you know, 180-character uh, world, uh, you know, conservatives aren't seeking a conservative justice. Conservatives are seeking a justice that has an originalist and a textualist jurisprudence. So we want someone, like I said, who's going to have a fidelity to the Constitution and interpret the laws as written. Uh, that's what we believe as conservatives that a judge should do, that a judge should not make policy from the bench. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to reigning in the administrative state, for example, does that achieve a conservative end, which is to limit government and transfer more, you know, more of that power back to the people? Absolutely. But where, but on from a legal perspective, where that comes from is that comes from a belief of separation of powers. We're looking at this and saying, you know, some of these agencies are out of control. They don't have accountability to the people, and they're making laws that are that's a, that's a power that is properly delegated to Congress under our Constitution and not the executive branch. And so, um, you know, that's, again, we speak from a, from a different perspective, not necessarily a conservative or a liberal one, um, but talking about an originalist jurisprudence. Alex, Alex Smith, she is the executive director of America Rising and former chair of the College Republican National Committee. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your opinions about Brett Kavanaugh. Thank you so much. I had a great time. You bet.